Welcome to the Big Me Kickoff. I am your host, Kevin Noon. It is Friday, February 25th, 2022. We took last week off from the Big Me Kickoff. Felt a little bad about that. Um, And today it's going to be a little bit more basketball talk. So as you saw in the title, we're talking basketball. So I don't want anybody to be like, I didn't know. I'm here for football. Well, got plenty of weeks to talk about football. We're going to talk a little basketball season coming to an end. Ohio State has four games left to play in this regular season. You know, the Buckeyes are sitting at 11 and 5, 18 and 7 overall. Only one game behind Purdue and Wisconsin in the uh, loss column. Ohio State has an additional game to play because of some posts or uh, some postponements due to COVID along the way. They've already made up their game against Iowa. That one obviously did not go well. They have a makeup game against Nebraska. We'll talk about that here in a second. It's important for Ohio State to finish top four in the conference because that allows you the double bye in the Big Ten tournament, which is supposed to start March 9th. If you get the double bye, you don't start playing until Friday. And Ohio State has had to compact so many games into so few days. The chance to not play on Thursday would be huge for Ohio State's fortunes. So with four games left, obviously if Ohio State sweeps those four games, Ohio State is probably looking at potentially a Big Ten title in a regular season. If Ohio State goes 3-1, and one, Ohio State's still going to be fine. So if Ohio State goes 2-2, two and two, then things are going to matter because then Ohio State would be sitting with seven conference losses. The gap from Ohio State at five losses, fifth place in the conference right now has seven conference losses. And there are several teams there. We'll get into that here in a second. But let's kind of look at what Ohio State's schedule is remaining at this point. And that starts up on Sunday, February 27th, the lone remaining road game of the season at Maryland. Maryland's 13-15 and 15 on the year, 5-12 and 12 in the league, which is 12th in the conference. Ohio State did beat Maryland 82-67 on February 6th in a game where E.J. Liddell had 24, Zed Key had 14, Justin Arns had 14. Um, a noticeable omission from the top scorers there was Malachi Branham. Malachi Branham has really come on as of late. Uh, Arns has kind of been hit or miss. I mean, obviously he had some success there. You hope that he's able to kind of pick up from what he was able to do Earlier in the season, I mean, he's just not really had the rhythm all year long. Uh, he ended up getting popped pretty good in the game against Illinois. Uh, we did see him come back. Or at least I saw him go to the scorer's table. I'm pretty sure he came back in the second half of that game. Uh, Going to need all hands on deck. Then you go to Tuesday, March 1st, Ohio State and that makeup game against Nebraska. Nebraska 7 and 20 on the year, 1 and 15 in conference, 14th out of 14 teams in the Big 10. Again, a reschedule from January 22nd. Ohio State did defeat Nebraska earlier in the year, 87-79 in overtime. That would have been a bad loss if Ohio State would have dropped that one. Uh Branham 35, Wheeler 16, Liddell had 10, but he was only 2 of 14 from the floor. Uh, fortunes haven't gotten any better around Nebraska. They've announced that, uh, Fred Hoiberg will be back. He's taking a deduction and pay. Uh, that just, that experiment's not going to work out. I just think I feel pretty safe in saying that, um, Ohio State's going to need to come out. That's of all the games right there. That's, that's the one that's got to be the biggest layup in, in, in name and in rankings. I mean, good news for Ohio State is they don't play a team that's higher than seventh in the conference down the stretch. The bad news is the conference is so deep this year that you could lose to the 10th, the 11th, maybe the 12th ranked team in the conference. I don't know. So you got to be careful there. Ohio State then comes right around and plays again on the third, which is a Thursday against Michigan State, 18 and nine, nine and seven in the league, seventh in the big 10, uh, first meeting of the year. So there's no, you know, you can't go back to a game this season and say, well, they were able to do this. Uh, in the in that game, the good news is Ohio State's not having to go to the Breslin Center. This game is in Columbus. Ohio State certainly bet, fares better against Michigan State in Columbus. Generally, you see Tom Izzo led teams playing some of their best basketball by this point of the year. It just hasn't happened for them. So you gotta like Ohio State's chances there. And then you close the season 
March 6th, which is a Sunday against Michigan, 15 and 11, also nine and seven in conference. But again, based on how the math and geometry all works, call them eighth in the Big Ten. Ohio State did defeat Michigan 68-57 in a game where E.J. Liddell had 28, Cedric Russell had 12. So there you go. There you see it. Ohio State's not going to be playing Purdue or Wisconsin or Illinois again here at the at the top of the Big Ten standings. I mean, everything is from the from the middle down, which is which is good news in theory. But again, you can't let up at this point. And again, you're also sitting there having Ohio State play four games in a week. So uh, you're going to have to rest pretty hard because you go. You play Sunday, no game Monday. You play Tuesday, no game Wednesday. You play Thursday, no game Friday, no game Saturday, and then you play again on Sunday. Now, this does kind of bring up the importance of the Big Ten tournament. And while it would be great to get a tournament championship, Ohio State came a, came up a game short last year, losing to Illinois in overtime. While a tournament championship would be great, I think that it's a lot more important to be able to have that right draw in the NCAA tournament, finally escape the first week of the tournament. I think that would do a lot more getting to the Sweet 16. I mean, win all these games and see where things go. Because here's 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 the reality. Uh, Purdue and Wisconsin are the only four lost teams, which is atop the conference in, in league play. Purdue and Wisconsin play each other. So one of those teams is is guaranteed a fifth league loss. The game is at Wisconsin. And then as we look at kind of the schedules, and I'm going to throw Illinois in here too because you've got these four teams that are at the top of the conference. And then it's a two it's a two game gap from Illinois and Ohio State with five losses to the teams that are sitting there with seven losses. Wisconsin is at Rutgers versus Purdue versus Nebraska. Going to the rack isn't an easy game. Uh, we've seen Rutgers kind of give back a little bit of their their gains that they've made. But Ohio State lost at the rack. Teams have gone in there into Piscataway and had trouble. So you just don't know. And this Wisconsin team has been very Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, yes, they are 22-5, 13-4, but you just don't know. Purdue is at Michigan State, at Wisconsin, and then close out against Indiana. I don't think they play for an old oak and bucket like in football, but Again, that big in-state rivalry, everything on the line. Um, and then we'll throw Illinois in there, who Ohio State has a game in hand on, sort of like the way that Ohio State has won the one game against Wisconsin. So if you get into the tie and you get into tiebreakers, Ohio State has an edge there. Uh, Illinois is at Michigan, home against Penn State, home against Iowa. So you really have to kind of like Ohio State's chances in terms of if Ohio State's able to take care of its own business. At that point, you need the winner of Wisconsin and Purdue to lose along the way because it doesn't matter if Ohio State, let's say Wisconsin wins. It doesn't matter that Ohio State has beaten Wisconsin. If Wisconsin wins out, Wisconsin sits at four conference losses. Ohio State sits at five conference losses if it wins out. There's, there's, you know, Wisconsin's your champion. So... Ohio State needs both of those teams to lose a game. And realistically, if Purdue gets past Wisconsin, Purdue needs to lose twice because Purdue and Ohio State were one play. And because of that, Ohio State has to, you know, Ohio State would lose that head to head. So it's going to be interesting down the stretch. I mean, we're not quite into championship week yet. But don't miss out here. And I and I know, I know as we're doing this show right now that we have, you know, it's just a small fraction of the fan base that follows basketball the way that they follow football. But I think it's going to be an exciting run. Now, if the season ended right now, Ohio State, like today, as we're recording this, this afternoon, Friday, Friday afternoon, Ohio State would be the four, which means that Ohio State would either draw Maryland, Minnesota, or Rutgers. And Maryland and Minnesota would play each other on, what, I guess, Wednesday. And then the winner of that game would play Rutgers on Thursday. And then the winner of that game would feed into Ohio State on Friday. And then Ohio State would potentially draw the one seed if the one seed's able to get through its business and so on. So 
so very important to get that buy, to get that second buy, not to have to play these games because you know you've got to have tired legs at this point. And while Ohio State plays on Sunday and then theoretically wouldn't play till Thursday or Friday, and that's just going to be that's going to feel like a, a month long vacation, not having to play games every other day. Uh, there's something to be said. We've seen Ohio State take teams with tired legs into the tournament. And now the question is, and I, I read this on the Ask the Insiders board over at Buckeye Scoop, is it best for Ohio State to make an early departure out of the in, or out of the Big Ten tournament? Not if you're going to win the whole darn thing. And, and I think eight teams could win the whole darn thing. Um, but I wouldn't trade a strong NC2A run for a Big Ten tournament title. I'm much more interested in a Big Ten regular season title because that shows what you've done over over several months versus what you've done in a three or four game scenario over the weekend. Um, I think a perfect situation is Ohio State gets the double by, wins handily on Friday. You never want to pull for a loss, but you know, just if they lose on Saturday in a close one. Lock in, lock in their spot with the NC two A in terms of okay, you're on the four line or wherever you end up, and then not play on Sunday and get that extra day. We know historically that playing in the Big Ten championship game doesn't mean much in terms of where you're going to be seated in the NC two A tournament. The Big Ten tournament championship game, generally the last one. The only time that the committee really makes a second bracket is if a team that was not going to be in the field is playing in the championship game and somehow wins and they have to plug you in. And at that point, aren't you getting in probably as a 12 or an 11? Aren't you going to be somebody that's probably going to have to go through Dayton in the first four? You're not going to be changing the top end of any sort of brackets. So I don't know. I don't think that if it were hypothetically Ohio State and Wisconsin playing in the championship game. I think the only change that you could sit there and see is you have two slots in play and the winner is going to be in this slot or this slot or vice versa. I don't, you know, there's not a lot of wholesale change. So I don't know if, I don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze to play that additional game unless you win it. I mean, it's nice. You put it on the banner. It means something. I mean, Ohio state really has not been able to break through yet under the current administration and that's another hot button issue that i'll talk about here for a second as well um this chris holtman coaching assassination that i see time and time again out there uh it's one of the most jekyll and hyde things i've seen ohio state goes out and beats duke it's fantastic louisville starts sniffing around about chris holtman stay away from our guy and then there are other times like well this isn't the guy we, you know, we're just never going to break through at this point. A lot of that is because football has raised the stakes so much and expectations, even, even ludicrously high expectations are better than no expectations. You don't, if, if your program has no expectations in something, that's when you know you have the wrong guy. That's when you know that you're just not doing well because nobody cares at that point. So it's good that Ohio State fans are demanding this, that, and the other. But I also think that there's a situation of where the expectations from football have really leaked into basketball to a point of where Ohio State doesn't have 10 final, you know, final four championships. They, they, they don't. I mean, that's just not where Ohio State basketball has been. And there's no reason not to want that. You want that kind of stuff. You want to be at the, at that upper echelon with the top programs, but it hasn't necessarily been there. Um, not every player is going to want to come to a school that it's football first, second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, then there's basketball. They want to be the, the major you know, the major focus. I think NIL could be something that could be really good if things really start to develop on that front in terms of at least some short-term monies that would become available. I know that Zed Key has a deal with a local car, car dealership. I assume EJ Liddell has some things going on. You know, I, I don't I don't have a list of everything that's going on there, but, you know, I think that if 
the machine gets into place to where legal NIL deals are in place for basketball players and that there's some real money there. I think, I mean, the Big Ten is far and away the best league in, in college basketball once again this year. Uh, why not go to Ohio State? I mean, I think one of the big concerns, and one thing that I will get, I will say that has been a concern is Ohio State has not been able, for one reason or another, to land that big guy. Then that changes in 23 with Felix, Felix Uxpara. Uh, and then in 24, they've got... Um, Awesome parks. So, I mean, that you've got you've got some guys coming, but Ibrahim Diallo was never going to work out, in my opinion. Great story, great kid by all accounts. I never really got to talk to him that much. I'm speaking strictly from an on the court ability to contribute now. When Ibrahima was here, offensively challenged was the term that was used with a heavy emphasis on the word challenged. And it just never really came together for him. But Ohio State is kind of in that chicken egg situation. How do you how do you lure the big man in that's going to be able to do these things without showing success? But how are you going to have success without having the player? I mean, Ohio State certainly was on the list of, of schools for Chet Holmgren. I would have been floored if Chet Holmgren would have ended up at Ohio State. I mean, absolutely floored. But, you know, you're going to need somebody to break that dam because it's been a minute since Ohio State has had that guy. Greg Odens aren't just hanging out there waiting to find, you know, to go to Ohio State. That's just not that's just not the situation. It certainly helps if some of them are in the in the footprint playing, you know, if if there's a guy playing for uh All Ohio Red, or Ohio Buckets, or one of the teams around here, then great. You got a great shot there. But when you're having to go and recruit nationally, and you're not seeing that guy out of Indianapolis, you're not seeing that guy coming out of St. Mary's, Ohio, or whatever, and you're having to go and get a kid out of Jacksonville, Florida, or Redlands, California, or 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 wherever, I mean, it's, it's a challenge. So I just... I just do what you want to do in terms of what your thoughts are on Chris Holtman. I'm not going to change your mind. You're not going to change my mind. So, I mean, that is what it is. But, you know, I think sometimes people need to stop and see the forest for the trees. But, again, I'm getting off my soapbox. I'm not going to get into a bunch of stats or anything else because it's just a friendly conversation there. Me, your humble host, Kevin Noon, the Big Me Kickoff. But I'm really looking forward to this week of basketball. My wife, on the other hand, who doesn't really care for basketball – I think she's going to probably start reading some books or something because I've already told her that this is the week that I start watching a lot of basketball. I've been very casual about it this year for one reason or another. This this is the week where the TV is generally on games and I'm flipping between games and I'm talking about games and she's just trying to figure out how to go see friends in Cleveland. But we'll have plenty of it to talk about. I promise we're not going to make all of these shows here during this stretch about basketball, but we will talk about it as warranted. But uh, if you have any suggestions for story topics that you'd like to hear me talk about here on Big, uh, Big Me Kickoff, let me know. Put in the comments. Email me at kevin at buckeyegrove.com. Still have the old email address. Think about doing a live show next week. We'll see. We'll see. Thinking about doing a live show. Uh, don't want to be called a coward. And for those of you who, who watch the channel a lot, you understand the joke there. But uh, I think we, we got about 19 minutes. I think that's good enough for, for today. Uh, you know, I want everybody to have a safe and happy weekend coming up here. Be sure to click subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss a channel if you catch us on YouTube. Leave us a five-star review if you're hearing the audio podcast. That helps more people find out. Be sure to watch and listen to all of our great programming on our channel here at Buckeye Scoop. Uh, but until next time, I'm your host, Kevin Noon. And I will talk to you here on the Big Me Kickoff very soon.